so so this facility of of knowing about the electrons and and protons and nucleus was not available to the people who 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 were doing all this now with that understanding of the structure of atom let us try to understand what must be happening okay we know about ions so what are ions you have a sodium metal and and this classical picture that we have that tells us there are two here and eight here and one here so proton is 11 neutron is 12 electron is 11 hmm? atomic mass is 23 so 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 this is what we know and what is how can something become negatively charged it is only the the transfer of electrons into it so if you want to make this negatively charged and it will be difficult to make it negatively charged but but still so if you want to make something negatively charged what do you do what do you do you actually add an electron here we know that uh, that sodium is a is a metal an alkali metal and it has got the tendency to donate its electron and become positive itself right but so so here what happens how do you get a positive charge the positive charge positive charge is obtained positive charge is obtained by loss of electrons let us mind it we have protons you can say it could be by the gain of protons but protons are so tightly bound inside the nucleus that they have nothing to do with it they do not get transferred it is only the loosely bound electrons which hop from one to another do we get that point it is the loosely bound electrons which actually get transferred so so if if it gets transferred earlier it was this so the charge was plus 11 here and minus 11 here the net charge there was zero charge here so the net charge was zero what happens in case of say chlorine okay So there is two here, there is eight here and there is seven here. Now, now I'm, I am I'm first talking about sodium. So suppose it loses one electron. So I have 11 protons, so plus 11, but only 10 electrons. So plus 10, minus 10 the net is plus one so it is only the absence of an electron that is causing a positive charge and it is not the transfer of protons which will cause it though it could <coughs> have caused but first of all it is hugely hugely massive about 2000 more times more massive than an electron and secondly it is it is absolutely tightly bound by the by the and 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 there's an anomaly these are positive, positive, positive protons which are bound together in a nucleus and we are saying that likes repel. So these are short range nuclear forces which come into operation if two particles come closer than a femtometer, 10 to the power minus 15 meters, they start getting attracted irrespective of their charges. And even the neutral particles get attracted. So even the neutrons, they are not just sitting there, they are also glued together. Okay, so the neutrons attract neutrons, the protons attract neutrons, the <coughs> protons attract protons. And so usually that they absolutely discard any electrostatic force that could be operating there. Okay, so they are short range forces. Fine, the electrostatic forces, as we will see, are long range forces okay okay and 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 there is a suspicion that there is some other particle which glues them and that the scientists call gluons 
okay gluons or the god particle that is that is <coughs> keeping the nucleus bound and they now have a faint faint uh, indication of the existence of that particle okay so so the so so that's how you get a positive charge it is nothing but it is so it is nothing but the absence of electrons now here the protons are 17 the the neutrons are 18 the electrons are are 17 so so it gives you plus 17 0 minus 17 the net is 0 here if you go here what happens if it gains one electron somehow then then it remains 17 this becomes 18 so so you gain one electron so it becomes 18 so the charge that it contributes is minus 18 and the total is minus 1 okay so it is only the transfer of electrons even a positive charge is being caused by an electron just the mere absence of it okay so so positive charge is obtained by loss of electrons and a negative charge is caused by negative charge i'll say a net positive or a net negative charge is obtained by gain of electrons okay so gain of electrons we get that point fine so 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 that's how you get the charges fine And it should be very, very clear. So it is the loosely, very, very, very light and loosely bound electrons which are moving even otherwise in motion which are responsible for a positive or negative charge. So what must have happened here in the glass rod? When the silk cloth was rubbed, somehow some electrons from the glass rod must have, must have hopped, must have jumped from here, here to here. So, so it was electron which got transferred so that the silk cloth got excess of electrons and the and the and the glass rod became deficient in electrons and deficiency of electrons is positive charge so that's why this must have become positive and this negative here the opposite must have happened some electrons must have jumped from the cat's fur to the ebonite rod and that's why this became negative and this became positive and it was no wonder the moment you touched them, the electron which had come from here, that actually went back and made everything neutral as it was earlier. From where did you get the energy for the transfer of electrons? From that vigorous rubbing motion, that work that you did, that was enough to pluck the electrons from one material and moved it to the other. Okay? And hence, the charges that they must have got was, was equal and opposite. Equal and opposite. But this insight, <coughs> the luxury of this insight is available to us. It was not available to the people of those times. Still, if they came up with this, they did a great, great, great job. Understand? You understand? So, Fine. Gluons, 